Games between the New Orleans Saints and Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Raymond James Stadium are always a little weird. Will that continue to be the trend on Monday Night Football? Breaking down the big matchup between the Saints and Bucks. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bucks Nation? What's up, Who Dat Nation? Gross. Ah. James is going to fire me from my <laughs> own show. I got you. Welcome to the Locked On <laughs> Bucks and Locked On Saints podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We, are, we, of course, are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. I am David Harrison, the now soon to be former host of Locked On Bucks after. Bucks fans run me out of my own program, and he is Ross Jackson. Both of us credential members of the media. Find me covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for BucksGameDay.com. Find Ross covering the New Orleans Saints for SaintsWire.com. And, of course, Locked on Saints that has like 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Congratulations <laughs> on that milestone. Shout out to the YouTube fam coming through strong. Appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Make sure you're also following us on Twitter. Ross is at Ross Jackson. Nola and I am at D Harrison H. You know what? Let's pretend Ross is at D Harrison 82. So if you want to follow Ross, D Harrison 82, <laughs> that's where you need to do it. Crossover <laughs> Thursday is presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. No compete with other players, just you versus the projections. Build your roster two to five players. And if they score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. It takes you less than 60 seconds to enter unless you're me and overthink literally every choice. Thing. that you make but it's still fun because you're still going to be sitting there analyzing football we love prize picks we know you will too first time users you get a 100 instant deposit match up to 100 with the promo code locked on hopefully you make better use of that than i did that's prizepicks.com or the prize picks app use the promo code locked on it, it is a lot of fun though ross oh, yeah. um what hasn't been a lot of fun or well you know what let's go let's let's do it let's do a, a good bad good sandwich okay. always love doing crossovers with ross jackson first of all He's my boss, so anytime I get a chance to to kiss his butt, I'm going to take advantage of, of that and hope that my next raise is a good one. But, Such a military rat. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's the bad news sandwiched in here, right? Uh, not a lot of fun watching Bucks and Saints football these days. Um, we're saying pre-recording, right? There's three teams between the two of us, Commanders, Bucks, Saints. The team that's winning, not the team that anybody expected would be nope. the team winning, but that's how it's worked out. So here's the here's the end of the the good bad good sandwich. It's Monday night football is an opportunity for both these teams maybe to do something right and to get things back on track because this division is wide open and and up for grabs really for from anybody. Yeah, so far um, it doesn't look like any of these teams want to win their division. I, I'm starting to vote that we send someone else from an ex from a different division. Give the NFC East all four teams or something. They deserve it. They've gone through the pits. Over in uh, the NFC East, but yeah, no, this is a this is a big opportunity for both of these teams. For the Bucks, it would give them, you know, the undeniable tiebreaker over the New Orleans Saints, and of course, push them into a winning record or or a, a non losing record. Yeah. And then you have the uh, New Orleans Saints, who, uh, I mean, at best, probably at this point, like if they made a five game run, sure, uh, but that seems unlikely considering the opponents they have there. But at least you get an opportunity to kind of play spoiler in a stadium where you found some success. But you mentioned the uh, the Andy Dalton primetime woes. He's got the longest road primetime skid in mm. since the merger. So that's not really boding very well for the New Orleans Saints either. Yeah, and I think quarterback, right? From, from a Tampa Bay Buccaneers standpoint, Ross, quarterback has been the biggest story about the New Orleans Saints all mm -hmm. season long if you're a Bucs fan or a Bucs media member because of Jameis Winston, not because of Andy Dalton, but because of Jameis Winston. Right. In fact, I went to New Orleans for week two instead of going to Detroit to cover the commander's game. Why? And, and we, I spoke to you about this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see Jameis Winston lead the New Orleans Saints onto the field against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He got injured against the Buccaneers. It's the rivalry. It's Jameis. For, uh, it, there's just too many storylines to go to Detroit to watch Carson Wentz face off against the Lions. Like that, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm not going to give that up. But of course, now Jameis Winston isn't on the field, right? But like weekly now, I'm seeing tweets, some from you, some from some other Saints people that I follow and trust. Nick Underwood is one of them. Like, is this going to continue? I mean, I, I get the vibe, right? Is it going to continue to be Andy Dalton's show? And if even if it is, is that really the biggest story surrounding the Saints for this game? 
Yeah, I, I think it is going to continue to be Andy Dalton at, at this point. I, I don't see any reason that I mean, I see lots of reasons why it shouldn't be, but I don't see any right. reasons why the Saints are going to change their mind, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, um, I could see I, I could name several reasons why James Winston should be out there, especially if he's healthy. Uh, it was his job to begin with. Uh, I know people have kind of talked about this whole idea of like a policy to not lose your job when you're mm -hmm. when you're ill or when you're injured. But we all know that's not a thing. Like that's never been a thing in the NFL. Uh, we watched several. Carson Wentz literally yeah. just lost his job to Taylor Heineke for uh, an injured finger. But, and also again, right? Like we've seen again, this from Carson yeah. Wentz like several times. You know, it kind of happened to Matt Ryan earlier this yep. year as well. To an extent, it could potentially happen to Aaron Rodgers coming up here in a moment. So. Like, it's not really that out of the ordinary to see it happen. But regardless of that, it's still the big story right now for the New Orleans Saints is if you're going to roll with Andy Dalton, you have to have a reason to do it. And so far, we haven't seen a reason to do it. I mean, they gave him the job off of throwing two pick sixes and three back-to-back-to-back yeah. -to -back -to -back interceptions, including one of them in the end zone. He And then they kind of reaffirmed him getting the job when Alvin Kamara scored three touchdowns and the defense shut out the Las Vegas Raiders. And then he's keeping the job after bottoming out and pitching yeah. the New Orleans Saints first shutout in 332 games, but nearly 20 years since they were shut out. And it, don't get me wrong, it wasn't all on him. It was the offense as a whole. But that's sort of been the, the New Orleans Saints argument so far is that the problems aren't just that Andy Dalton, the problems aren't just that quarterback, they're elsewhere on the offense. So they're going right. to keep going with the guy they think is going to win them games. But if you're worried about the offense not being able to be sort of the rising tide, Andy Dalton's not going to be that guy for you. Like you need the the weapons to raise him up. And right now, if that's not what you're getting, then you need to find a guy that's going to elevate the rest of the offense. And I don't know that the Saints have the intent to do that. I think they're going to continue to roll with Andy Dalton. It certainly seems like it, which is weird to me. So to hear that is weird to you and or unexplainable, really, it just kind of and it just kind of affirms that that opinion is, is an accurate one. Um, obviously quarterback storylines have been huge for the Buccaneers going back to preseason training camp, retirements, non-retirements. I'm trying to handle business in Mobile, Alabama and Tom Brady just won't leave me alone. Um, <laughs> but now the, the storyline Ross, honestly, and this has really kind of been brewing since the last time I was able to cover a Bucks game in person. It was in Pittsburgh. I'll be covering this one as well. And the storylines are the same, but they're just intensified leaving Pittsburgh. It was all about the coaching staff and decision making and play calling and who do they trust, who don't they trust. Coming into this game, we're coming off of a Cleveland Browns loss for the Buccaneers where, I mean, I, I kind of said it in jest, but quite literally the coaching, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coaching staff literally fought against their own offense, refusing to allow Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time, one of the greatest fourth quarter uh, quarterbacks of all time, you know, uh, probably has a record in comebacks. I don't have that number right in front of me, so I don't want to quote it exactly, but that's there's probably a Bucks fan out there who's going to correct me on that, but like, and, and we end up with a screen pass that does nothing, no timeout. We run a bunch of time off the clock, and then we throw a pass to the midfield mark, and then we want to call a timeout. And and Todd Bowles is an explanation of these whole things of saying, well, maybe there's an interception, or, or or maybe there's there's a bad play, but it's not even so much that Todd Bowles went super conservative, Ross. Mm -hmm. What is actually more concerning to me is what happened Monday in the day after press conference because now todd you've had a, you have, you've had time to fly home you've had time to oh, have yeah. briefings with your coaches and your communication staff and see what's happening and you double down with the i wanted to protect against a potential bad play but not only do you do that you actually go as far as to point out that the pass that tom brady threw to get the buccaneers offense to midfield as the clock was winding down could have been picked off so we're not Can't they all we're right they, they absolutely could but we're not absolutely so not only are we defending our own our own passive coaching mentality, mm -hmm. but we're actually going so far as to defend ourselves by saying that our quarterback literally on that play potentially could have done exactly what I was talking about doing. And, and, and I just it's, it's one of those things where you want to hear your coach say Tom Brady makes that throw all the time. Yep. And we've seen Tom Brady make those throws all the time yep and you put the faith in your legendary quarterback it's what you brought him here for that's why you re-signed chris godwin it's why mike evans restructures his deal for you to free up cap room to bring in all these guys not to watch the clock wind down and play for overtime but to go out there and get the job done the way they did against the los angeles rams yep and just and, let you just let you know it as well tom brady tied for first place in career fourth quarter comebacks yeah. uh since 1960 with 43 
Right. And he's been playing since 1960. So, I mean, look, if you're going to, <laughs> if you're going to have Tom Brady on the roster, why are you handcuffing him? So while some of this is said in jest, look against the Cleveland Browns, Todd Bowles absolutely handcuffed his quarterback. Byron left, which either went along with it or was complicit in handcuffing his quarterback to the point where Ross Tom Brady wanted to go for it on a fourth and two in Cleveland territory, uh, potentially put the game out of, out of, out of reach for the Cleveland Browns and Byron left, which is sitting there on the sideline saying, no, 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 don't snap the ball. Basically, we're just going to try to pull them off sides, not even covering his mouth doing it. So, right. you know, I mean, it's, it's just the level of handcuffing our own offense from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coaching staff is what's got to be frustrating if you're inside that Buccaneers locker room. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's got to be very, very frustrating to watch for sure. And I think for the New Orleans Saints, like seeing Tom Brady get handcuffed in prime time by his own team would certainly be helpful. But I will say that probably like the secondary story for for the Saints before we turn things over to matchups is looking over towards the defensive side, which is where a lot of my key matchups are going to be, because that's what you're looking for to stand up against Tom Brady and those Tampa Bay Buccaneers, because they did a great job last week against the San Francisco 49ers and the you know, litany of weapons that they have, the offense just couldn't get the job done over on the other side. So if the coaching staff is going to help the New Orleans Saints defense, then all of a sudden the Saints end up having a little bit of life going into this game. Yeah, absolutely. That Saints defense can certainly be effective. And Ross, something else that uh, has been effective for me in, in a lot of my travels is our friends over at Audible. This Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Audible. And Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to absolutely love find block forever now wherever you get your podcast block forever is a brand new podcast from former nfl all pro ryan khalil and of course from audible khalil takes the conversation about football to the next level and he gives football fans an insider's look at the game through the eyes of the greatest players and personalities of all time new episodes of block forever will be recorded and released every week ahead of thursday night football so you can get yourself a little appetizer going before the big game Ryan and guests discuss topics like the players' psyches, sports betting, playing through pain, being a leader, and how to deal with combative teammates. The Bucks know a little bit about that. Here, nothing is out of bounds. Available for free on Audible or wherever you get your podcast. Catch the full Block for Every series available anywhere you get your podcast. Available everywhere now. Audible, get in the game. All right, Ross and I are back on this crossover Thursday. Thursday, we're going to identify the key matchups that are going to decide who comes out on top of this NFC South divisional battle, the battle of heavyweights. <laughs> Speaking of heavyweights, all the, the heavyweights can heavyweights. be found on Locked On Sports today. The biggest games, the biggest storylines are on Locked On Sports today. Go behind the scoreboards of those games and go behind the scenes with local experts and insight that only Locked On can provide because we have amazing people like Ross Jackson on the ground. Soaking in all of the Andy Dalton storylines for you. Available ah. on YouTube anywhere you get podcasts. Ross Jackson, key matchups. You said you're going to talk defense. I've got a question about your offense, actually. But I, but you want to talk defense about the Saints, and you are the expert. So let's start there. What is your key matchup for the Saints uh, to, to come out of Ray J with a win? Yeah, we could definitely hit both sides here. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus in first on the same similar matchup that I focused in on last week for the Saints up against the San Francisco 49ers. It's Paul Sinadibo and Alante Taylor or whatever combination of corners is out there. This could get very interesting because Marshawn Lattimore could return to see his son, Mike Evans, in this game. We'll see if that ends up being the case as he works his way back from a lacerated kidney issue, which is like I love how you just issue. flow through that, by the way. What was that? Oh, did I, I say something? You just flow through that. You don't, I, even wait for just... the, you don't even wait for the crowd reaction. You just, you just keep <laughs> Good comedy is in subtlety, my friend. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, whatever that ends up being, whether it's, you know, Marshawn versus his third grade son or whether it is a thing to where you've got Paul Sadibo and Alante Taylor back out there again, those guys have been awesome and they've looked really, really good. And so they're going to be tasked quite a bit with, you know, uh, guys like, you know, those wide receivers and Chris Godwin, as well as, you know, the other players that can get involved there over on that, that offense. But, you know, I, I think you look at where Paul Sadibo has come along. He's gotten better and better and progressively better throughout this season uh, with the, you know, as his injury, as, as he's gotten healthier, he's gotten better, which is the track that you want to see him go on. He had an outstanding rookie season, struggled earlier here in the second year, kind of started to have that sophomore slump, but has rebounded from that and looks really good. Alante Taylor has been every bit of what the New Orleans Saints promised that he would be when they invested a second round pick in him. Uh, I liked Alante Taylor in the draft. I thought that he was going to be a fourth or third round guy, like an early day two, day three guy. 
Now I can see exactly why the New Orleans Saints said, no, no, he has the tools that fit and we can elevate him in, in a certain way. They've done a really good job with that. And then if Marshawn Lattimore returns to the field, you know what you get with him. But I think that right. secondary is going to be a really, really important piece to uh, what the New Orleans Saints can do here. The Saints haven't been as effective when it comes to run defense this year. I think they went into the San Francisco 49ers game 22nd in the NFL, but then they they performed pretty well against San Francisco. But I'll tell you what, if you if you, in today's NFL, if you give me a defense that is mid against the run, but is, you know, performing well in terms of top 10 lines against the pass versus the other way around, I, I will take mid against the run versus excellent against the pass any day. So that's that's what I'm looking at to start us off for those key matchups. What about you on your side with the Bucks? Yeah, so for the Buccaneers, this is going to make Saints fans, Saints fans a little bit disappointed, but it's it's the Buccaneers versus I'm going to call it mental health because mm, okay, I mean the Saints. Yeah, like, I get this. I get that they beat the Saints in week two, right? But but it doesn't take one. You know, you can't knock down the giant one time and call it done. Like you mm-hmm. you've got to become a a a defeater of of that giant of said giant to really call them you know fully fully. Uh, I guess extinguished, right? Let's call that that mojo extinguished. Like the, the, they're still the Saints, and you can look at the Buccaneers and and coming off the wins against the Rams and then the the Seattle Seahawks before the bye week. You know, you come out heading into Cleveland, and there's actually confidence building. And a lot of people are talking about this could be the turning point. Hmm. And here's the thing: I'm okay with fans talking about turning points, and I'm even okay with media members and myself and James talking about turning points. It's kind of our job to try to kind of pinpoint those turning points. And what do right. we all want to do? We all want to be the guy that can come back eight weeks later and say, see, guys, I told you that was the turning point. You know what I don't like? And this isn't necessarily a lot of shade towards Cameron break. Cameron Ray is a, a great dude. And I think his mind is, you know, in the right place. But when I hear guys like Cam break coming out saying, we really feel like that win against the Los Angeles Rams could be our turning point. Because mm-hmm. to me, what I hear is an NFL player and a potentially a locker room already saying that moment had some sort of mystical ripple effect that's going to carry uh, us through the sure. rest of the season. And that's yep. not how this business works. Nope. Turning points and momentum. Momentum is real. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But turning po- points and momentum being credited for winning, that's a fan thing. That's a media yeah. thing. Yeah. You can't do that in the locker room. And nope. Todd Bowles talked earlier this season about guys living off of the Super Bowl win. Well, same thing. You can't live off that Los Angeles Rams win. And then you come out in Cleveland. And again, you you know, not to, to beat the dead horse, but you see the coaching staff quite quite frankly, combat their own team's winning percentages and winning chances. And I just look at that. You pile that on with prime time. The Bucks historically, I know Andy Dalton's got his issues, but the Bucks historically have also laid eggs during prime time. Prime time against the Saints, an even bigger egg is usually been laid, right? There's just a lot of mojo working against the Buccaneers. And I just wonder if all that good nature, all that, see, guys, that was going to be the turning point. Well, now you can't say it's a turning point because Cleveland happened. So is right. Cleveland going to be the turning point? Like, so now I just hope that this, t- this team isn't going out there looking for, well, hey, guys, if we beat New Orleans, it'll be our turning point. Well, OK, but that's not just going to happen. You have to go make it happen. So I'm just wondering what version of a Buccaneers squad we're going to get, because we've seen a very low motivated Buck squad. We've seen a very high motivated Buck squad. And honestly, until Mike Evans decided to put Marshawn Lattimore in timeout in New Orleans, I don't know that they come out with that victory. Mm-hmm. But. You, you can't have Mike Evans go get ejected from every game just so you can get a win against a division yeah. rival. So they've got to come out with some juice, Ross. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hear that. That's one of the things that I will say that I have been very impressed by when it comes to the New Orleans Saints being in their locker room, being in their pressers, is that they are not looking outside their organization at all. They are not looking at what the standings say. They're not looking at the fact they're still alive in the division. They're not looking at the fact that other teams around them are failing and leaving the door open. They are looking at how they have failed and how they want to get better. And everything is about insular attention. And now you have to be able to show that you can actually turn that into progression, which we haven't seen consistently. The Saints have not won back-to-back games so far this season. And so you have to show that you can do that and that you can actually fix these things. But just from an identifying the issue perspective, they're not deflecting things and looking outside the building. They're focused mm-hmm. on themselves and, and, and making themselves better. We'll see if they can do it. Absolutely. And we'll see who's going to win this game. Ross and I are going to tell you who is going to win this game with exact precision. Undefeated on the year, picking winners in these Saints Bucks games. Absolutely. Can't. And we're going to do so. We're going to do so. Thanks to Bet Online. Because this episode of Locked on Saints and Locked on Bucks is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. 
Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And don't think you know what the line is going to be, guys, because you might expect your team to be an underdog by quite a bit more than Bet Online thinks they're going to be. And then the, those, those bookmakers tend to be a little bit more accurate. So even if it surprises you, you might want to take something from it. If you love sports podcasts, which you probably do because you're listening to this, you can find those at Bet Online. As well, always the fastest and easiest way to get your sports betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, prediction time: Ross Jackson, David Harrison. Easiest game of the year to pick. The easiest Saints the pick. coming off of their first shutout in uh, since before games since they were the Aints, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, two thousand and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike the Ditka, Bucks yeah. having the worst coaching performance since. Greg Schiano was the next hot thing in the NFL. Woof. Um, yeah. Bucks favored by three and a half. Three so, and a half. That still like boggles my mind. And I think part of it is that like I'm coming off covering a game here where the Saints were nine and a half point underdogs on mm-hmm. the road. So mm-hmm. like three and a half is wild because that effectively tells you that it's like a pick them. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, home team usually gets field goal. So basically right. it's Bucks by half. Right. It's Bucks. <laughs> they're real, like, whatever, depends on when Mike Evans gets ejected. If if he gets right. ejected early enough, the Bucks will win. <laughs> but if he waits too long, then the Saints will probably win. Right. That's basically what's going to happen here. Right. Ross, before we get to our predictions, I do have a quick question. Yeah, yeah. The Bucks are not the only bad team or the only bad entity in this game against <laughs> primetime. Andy Dalton is very bad in primetime, right? Yikes. Ryan yep. Khalil could probably do a series of episodes for Audible on Andy Dalton's yips in primetime. Yeah, losing forever. Is that like... like if we, if we could pinpoint it, Andy Dalton would be over, right? So what do you make of the Andy Dalton primetime curse? I just think that there are, there are players that <laughs> I think that there are players that like something just happens when these games get elevated in, in a certain mm-hmm. way. And there was a stretch where he was really good. It, like it was like a 2000 and like, I don't know. It, it, there was a stretch where he was really good when the Bengals were really good and they were going to the playoffs for like those three years or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was a stretch where he was really good in prime time. Uh, or to where he was serviceable in prime time. He was really good against the right. Ravens, but he was serviceable in prime time. So you then get to this past, you know, stretch. I believe he's like six and nineteen now in prime time, and he's got the longest act, like the longest uh, road game skid in prime time since the merger. So not great. So I think that some of it is just really that, like, the pressure is very different. Like there was a whole narrative around Andy Dalton being this like guy that brought in this calming presence to the right. New Orleans Saints. And that was kind of the narrative that you kept hearing, like calming presence, calming presence, calming presence. And I haven't seen any evidence of the calming presence with him. Like when he's under pressure, he kind of folds when things aren't going perfectly. This team loses games, all of that. Mm-hmm. And again, like the San Francisco 49ers game can't just be put on him solely. Alvin Kamara fumbles right. at the goal line. Juwan Johnson has a touchdown pass go off his face mask, followed by Taysom Hill having a touchdown pass going off of his face mask, like all of that. You know what I mean? So I don't mean to like pinpoint it directly to him. But if I were to try to pinpoint where it is that I think the prime time skid comes in, like every player in the NFL will tell you that playing at different times a day doesn't matter, that everybody goes through their preparation the exact same way, their routine doesn't get impacted, anything like that. Clearly, it does, right? right? And I think for a guy like Andy Dalton, that preparation gets impacted. He hasn't figured out throughout his career what that preparation is. That happens sometimes for these players. And I think the other piece of it is that sometimes the pressure gets to be too much because these games do get oversold they get overproduced they get over you know scrutinized a lot of attention a lot of eyes all of that on those primetime games and i think maybe the pressure kind of builds up yeah no i mean look it made sense because i mean you know monday night camera is going to be firmly in his grill as he's warming up as he's stretching Mm -hmm. as he's running route trees and they're gonna he's gonna sit there he's gonna know why why is that camera in my face because yeah. they're talking about how bad I am in prime time. You um, never get reminded more about the fact that you're about to play a football game than when you're playing a prime time football game and everyone's yeah. cameras are in your face between snaps, during snaps. <laughs> yeah. It's just all over the place. It's wild. Yeah. It's just interesting because sometimes, like you said, it is the atmosphere. I asked I asked a player recently actually about playing their, uh, well, this wasn't that reason. It was first week of the, of the season about playing their first NFL game kind of how they felt and mm-hmm. i won't say who it was but they kind of shrugged it off they're like i mean honestly i played in front of bigger crowds in my college state uh, stadium so and i and i kind of was like huh and i went back and googled it i was like he did he played yeah, most, in front most of bigger do, especially, yeah, yeah especially if they play in the the power five like those stadiums are a hundred thousand deep yeah everything it's i was wild. like i guess that's a good point i guess it's kind of a step down which is weird but <laughs> 
Prediction time. Bucks favored by three and a half in Raymond James Stadium. Loser has to take the pirate ship home. Ross Jackson, who do you think is going to win this Monday night football matchup? This is one of those games where I have no idea how this game is going to go, if I'm being 100% honest. Like, there is this no. really cynical part of me that's like, oh, well, the Bucks are just going to run away with this one. But I also know how weird Saints and Bucks games are in Raymond James Stadium in particular. The 9 0 shutout last year with Taysom Hill at the helm and Dennis Allen as the interim that's head gross. coach, the 38 to 3 blowout before that, you know, the, the year before that. Uh, we see a lot of weird games, last second things, weird stuff always happening in these Ray J games. I, the, the Saints have not found a way to win two games in a row, which this week is a good thing for them because they lost last week up against San Francisco 49ers. And so the table. when we talk about like a three and a half point spread, the over under is at like 38, 39 and a half. So you're looking at like a 21 to 18. That's probably the fastest I've ever done math in my life. <laughs> um, 30, like a 21 to 18 game. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to play. I'm going to look at the New Orleans Saints who are intent upon continuing to compete, playing spoiler or trying their best to play spoiler in this game. I think ultimately they come up short, but I think that they give this Bucks team a little bit more of a run for their money than they expected and that any of us expect. So I'll take the Bucks to win here, but I'm going to take it like 21 to 20. I think this is like a Bucks. I mean, Bucks might be literally finally giving Tom Brady the opportunity to lead the game winning drive. They should have let him lead last week and giving yeah. and, and that ending up being the difference in this game. It, it's hard for me to pick the Saints to win, but I'm going to pick the Saints to be pesky and and potentially upset this team. Yeah. And if you take the against the Saints against the spread, you 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 make money off of that yep. over at uh, Bet Online. So yep. I think it's an accurate depiction. And honestly, and I said this on Locked on Bucks, some people agree, some people don't. That's the way this tends to work. But I think Todd Bowles wants this to be a defensive-minded team so bad that he's willing to handcuff his own offense to make it come to fruition. And I don't mm -hmm. think he's necessarily doing it on purpose. Like He's not staying on the sideline saying, okay, well, I don't want Tom to throw a touchdown here because right. then everyone will think it's Tom Brady and not Todd Bowles. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I just think he's so ingrained in his defensive-minded strategy that he is inadvertently handcuffing his offense because typically yeah, defense, trust his like defense to on the field. Yeah, absolutely. And they like to grind out the clock. They like to run the ball. They like to, you know, they like to do those kinds of things. So I do think it's going to end up being a close score. Um, honestly, I kind of think this game should be a situation where it's like a touchdown lead and, and the bucks have the ball with the ability to probably try to run out the clock and, and get some first downs, but they don't because they end up in like third and eight and run the ball anyway, and then put the defense back on the field and maybe new Orleans gets a late touchdown or something to make it closer than it even should have been but i do mm -hmm. have the buccaneers winning not covering the spread 24 21 mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. course if that spread drops which sometimes they do um then yep. then perhaps they, they will cover the spread but the way that i have is going it's still a close game still a one possession game um and and i'm sure that bucks fans will be very happy um they won't and i don't necessarily blame <laughs> them look not to get all nick casario on everybody okay but we i, I know we have a little fun with this type of an episode because both these teams are not very good right now but look it is december football and december right. football is always exciting and you know next may we're gonna wish we had some december football to talk about not again not trying sure. to get too nick casario 100%. on you here uh, but another chapter in the buck saints rivalry um according to saints fans not a rivalry so i apologize not um but for the buccaneers look the, the biggest storyline for me, Ross, has to be whether or not this coaching staff is going to get in the way, um, not just out of Cleveland, but there's been constant complaints about running on first down too much uh, and handcuffing this offense with short passes. 22 straight plays, Ross Jackson, against Cleveland Browns. The Buccaneers either ran or threw the ball short to start the game. Ooh. That is a defensive-minded coaching staff. Yeah, 100%. It takes me back to the Saints game back in like 2016, 2017 against the Bills where they ran like 24 straight times. It was a thing of beauty. But... Mm -hmm. That ended up being a blowout. So that that that's why they ran the ball that many times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, biggest story for me with the New Orleans Saints comes down to what does the quarterback play look like? And can Andy Dalton get over the hump when it comes to those primetime games? Looks like he's going to continue to be the guy throughout the, the rest of the season here until we hear otherwise. We were told to expect that to be the case. And so uh, it's going to be Andy Dalton versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, which I know is dealing with some injuries, but it's still mm -hmm. a very, very aggressive defense. It is a Todd Bowles defense after all. And uh, Andy Dalton has not handled pressure very well so far this season. The Saints offensive line has dealt with injuries. So the offensive identity running through Andy Dalton is something that has been a big time struggle for this team so far. And uh, we're curious to see if those struggles continue, especially with primetime. Absolutely. But then we look at these matchups. I mean, Andy Dalton versus primetime is a matchup to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, as mentality. much as 
the as much as the coaching staff has gotten in the way of Buccaneers success. I do expect them to do some self scouting, some soul searching, and maybe come out with a little bit more of an aggressive game plan. But you still have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the mojo in this game. The Saints are still, again, one regular season win does not undo everything else that has happened. Uh, you're coming off of a bad loss, especially out of a bye week. You have a losing record. Tom Brady's at risk to have his first losing record as an NFL quarterback ever, including the year he tore up his knee because Patriots won that game. So technically, he's 1 0 in that season. Right. Literally has never lost to Tom Brady, this guy. Uh, so Buccaneers versus the Mojo. That's not as as that's not as much of an X as an O thing as you can take to film, but I think that is one of the key matchups for this game for the Bucks. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. And for the Saints, the one that I'm looking at is going to be the Saints corners up against the uh, Tampa Bay uh, wide receivers. We'll see if Marshawn Lattimore is able to make it back for Parent Teacher Night. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be Paul Sinadibo and Alante Taylor over on the outside. <laughs> They're going to be matching up with some very talented. Uh, wide receivers in uh, in Tampa, and they did a great job against San Francisco. Can they carry that success over uh, into uh, what will be a big time game and a big time matchup for both of those young corners? Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, no matter what happens off the field, in the headlines, in the in the media rooms, the game is played on the field. And when the game gets played on the field, I think the Buccaneers find a way. I think Tom Brady finds a way to Tom Brady this thing for the Buccaneers. And they pull out a three point win and keep their hold on the NFC South because Ross, if they don't and the Falcons win, then the Falcons are first place in the NFC South. Oh, weird. Yeah. And after all the trash, we talked to Aaron Freeman at the divisional roundup in preseason. We cannot let the Atlanta Falcons take first place in the NFC South in December. What a weird year we're in. I've got the Bucks here uh, also getting it done. I think Tom Brady takes the controls back from Todd Bowles. Uh, it, it, you know, for a game winning drive, potentially I've got them uh, just barely getting the win with a last second drive, 21 to 20. So not covering or yeah, not covering the spread, but the Saints not getting the win either. All righty. So we both have the Bucks beating the Saints. Saints fans will be very unhappy about that. But Saints fans, you also have social media. Saints so fans tell are, us. are realists, too, though. Like they 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 yeah. know. They know what's going I, on this season. I see a lot of, of reflecting on better times on uh, oh, from the yeah. Saints fans that I see on my social media feeds, and and I appreciate that because you know when 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 the team isn't giving you a reason today to be happy, find your own reason to be happy. Celebrate the good old days, like when the Dome Patrol was 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 out and about. That's why I got this over here. This is this is for them. This is for them to always Absolutely. have something. <laughs> something positive to look at every time we do we do one of these episodes absolutely well something positive for us ross jackson is that our listeners and our viewers are still hanging with us Love even when the teams aren't always giving them all the reasons to and we thank you for making locked on bucks or locked on saints your first listener your first view of the day again if you're next listen check out locked on sports today the games that matter the biggest storylines in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts only in only ways that the locked on podcast network can provide i think i got that right locked on sports today available on this app youtube wherever you get podcasts for ross jackson host of locked on saints and staff writer saintswire.com i'm david harrison one of the hosts of locked on bucks and writer for bucks game day we will both be at raymond james stadium monday night to witness all the carnage so if you're there and you see us make sure you say hi if you're not if you're out and about please be safe be kind to one another. Enjoy the game this weekend. Like Nick Casario said, be thankful you got football. If you see us around again, make sure you say hi. And thank you for joining us for this crossover Thursday episode and Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.